Hey, welcome to part three of, so you want to be a homeowner and you're still living with your parents. So in this uh, final video in this series, what I want to talk to you about is um, beginning your research and your research should be on where do you want to live? Uh, what things are important to you? Uh, what's important in your uh, in your lifestyle? Uh, where do you want to lay your head at night and uh, research the particular areas uh, that you want to live? You also want to begin uh, the research as far as uh, financing and what options are available for you. Um, many states, almost all states, have what's known as state bond programs. And some of those state bond programs are going to offer down payment assistance. But what I like about a lot of them is that they require home buyer education. So that's an extra way that you can uh, learn information and learn it from uh, people in the industry uh, that can help you with things that you should uh, be aware of. For instance, um, how to budget. Uh, what comprises a mortgage, what things that you have to be aware of. Um, you also want to be discerning in who you take advice from. Now, your parents are going to give you advice. Uh, of course, uh, they're your parents. But sometimes you got to take that with a grain of salt. I've seen some parents tell uh, their kids that they absolutely need 20% down. And that might have been the case when the parents bought in the past, because maybe PMI back then was hundreds of dollars a month. In many instances, it's not that much uh, per month. And I've seen people sometimes put off home buying because they think they need a 20% uh, down payment. Um, the other thing in being discerning is um, you wanna begin uh, to create your, uh, your team. And your team ought to comprise of a good financial planner, one that does not have minimums. Uh, there are some financial planners that want you to have anywhere from 100,000 to 500,000 or more in assets in order for them to take you on as a client. There are others uh, who do not have minimums. And, those are, and that's a great resource and a great person to work with so that you can be on a path that, you know, when you reach that, that old age, uh, that you've got that whole plan set up. And the earlier that you can begin to work on that, uh, the better, because there is a power in compound interest. The other thing is you want to find a lender. This is the part where I raise my hand and say, pick me. Um, you want to find someone that you feel has your best interests at heart. Uh, they ought to have a good level of experience and knowledge. They ought to be education first and not pushy. And um, that's typically a, a good lender and um, one that's going to give you all the time that you need, answer the same questions 15 or 20 times for you and not get frustrated and help you to understand uh, the big decision that you're thinking about doing in your future. And the other thing is a realtor. You need a really good buyer's agent. You need one that uh, is upbeat, uh, that is aggressive when they need to be on your behalf, not to push you, but on the behalf of when they're you know, negotiating on your behalf um, or working out inspection issues uh, that may come up. Uh, so those are the three key people uh, that you want to have uh, in your arena for when you're ready to become a first time home buyer. So if this is a video series that you liked, please give me a thumbs up. If it's something that you think will benefit a friend or a family member, please forward. Uh, and as always, subscribe, leave comments. Those are uh, the reason that I love doing these videos. Thanks again for watching.